everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. This lesson is the first lesson about ecosystem engineers and in this first lesson we will be explaining what an ecosystem engineer actually is. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. Have you ever heard of the term ecosystem engineers before? Let's split this term into the two words separately first. So first of all, ecosystem. An ecosystem is a large community of living organisms, which are animals and plants, in a particular area. All plants and animals in this area are linked together through food chains and interactions between species. A good example of an ecosystem is a coral reef. Coral reefs are one of the most amazing and diverse ecosystems on Earth. They are made up of not only hard and soft corals, but also sponges, crustaceans, mollusks, fish, sea turtles, sharks, dolphins, and much, much more. An engineer is a person whose job it is to design and build. For example, building a bridge or road over a canyon between two steep hillsides. So let's add both of these words together to understand what an ecosystem engineer is. An ecosystem engineer is an organism, a plant or animal, that creates, changes or destroys a habitat. They change the availability of resources, for example food, for other species other than themselves by causing changes in the ecosystem. They are certainly not selfish animals as they like to help other creatures through their actions. An ecosystem engineer can have a huge impact on the diversity of species living in an area, so basically how many different types of animals are living in an area, and also they can hugely impact the health of the ecosystem as well. An animal or plant can be an ecosystem engineer through feeding habits, migration patterns or other behaviours, basically anything that results in changes. So humans are thought to be one of the most dramatic ecosystem engineers. Through developing cities, agricultural practices, logging, damming and mining, humans have changed many different habitats. There are two different types of ecosystem engineers. Allergenic ecosystem engineers, they change the ecosystem by transforming living or non-living materials from one physical state to another. So the best example of an allergenic ecosystem engineer is a beaver. River ecosystems rely on beavers to take down old or dead trees along riverbanks to use for their dams. This allows new, healthier trees to grow in abundance. The dams divert water in rivers, creating wetlands that are homes to a huge variety of animals and plants. And these animals and plants thrive in these wetland areas. Another good example is the woodpecker. Woodpeckers create holes in trees for them to nest in. Once the woodpecker has finished with the hole, they are used by other species of birds, insects or small mammals, like mice, for housing. Autogenic engineers change the environment via their own physical structures. As they grow and become larger, their living and dead tissues create habitats for other organisms to live on or in. Trees are a really good example because as they grow, their trunks and branches create habitats for other living things. These may include squirrels, birds or insects, among others. Dead wood from trees is also a really important habitat for lots of different types of insects. So there are some examples of ecosystem engineers on the land. Do you think there are ecosystem engineers in our oceans? There certainly are. Phytoplankton, which are microscopic plants, and zooplankton, microscopic animals, are both considered ecosystem engineers. They alter how cloudy and light the oceans are, controlling the depth at which photosynthesis can occur. So if we have a look at this picture on the left, it's a beautiful clear sea with not a huge amount of plankton in. Can you see that the sunlight shines all the way down to the bottom of the sea? 
However, looking at the picture on the right, this sea looks very cloudy and murky, simply because there is so much plankton living in this area of sea, all through the water column. If you were going swimming in this water and held your arm out, you might not be able to see your hand, let alone the bottom of the sea. So this limits how productive the bottom of the sea is. No light equals no photosynthesis on the bottom of the ocean. So there's probably not much life living on the sea floor. However, there's a huge amount of life floating in the water as the plankton. So this impacts the whole food chain. Giant kelp are a good example of autogenic ecosystem engineers in the ocean. As they grow and become larger, their living and dead tissues create habitats for other organisms to live on or in, such as sea urchins, lobsters, sharks and squid. So do you think whales, dolphins and porpoises are ecosystem engineers? They definitely are and we will learn all about this in the next lesson. So to recap, we now know that an ecosystem engineer is a plant or animal that changes the availability of resources to other species, other than themselves, by causing changes in the ecosystem. And we now know that there are autogenic and allergenic ecosystem engineers. And we've looked at some examples of ecosystem engineers on land and in the sea. In the next lesson, we will find out how whales are ecosystem engineers. Thank you so much for listening to this lesson on an introduction to ecosystem engineers. If you would like to find out more about Orca, you can do so on our website. That's www.orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you very much.